Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Friday, February 3rd, 2017. And in this video we're looking at a question which comes up from time to time, so I thought I'd put together this specific video. It is a question that I have covered within other videos, but I thought it would be good to put together a specific video to address this question, which is about the vertical lines that we see, which are sometimes referred to by the clowns, as polarity lines. David asks the question, Dazza, please help me to understand. All the stars in the background don't have the lines that go through them. That one specific one they seem to be talking about has the line going straight through it, just as the Earth and all the other planets. So is that other thing also one of the planets? If so, which one? If not, why does the star create that line that goes through it when none of the others do? David also goes on to say, If I am understanding this entire thing correctly, from this view, planets always have those polarity lines, is what I think they're called, lines. Stars never do. If this object is in fact a star, why does it create that line? As you can see, I've replied to David saying that these lines which are usually vertical, sometimes horizontal, are simply caused by a bright light source overloading the pixels in the image sensor, causing the charge to spill over into the neighbouring pixels along the same row or column of pixels, depending on the orientation of the image sensor. Bright stars will also cause these lines, as will any bright light source. They are not polarity lines, as claimed by the clowns like Steve Olson and Scott Sione, who have no idea what they're talking about. I have covered these lines in other videos, including starting at 5 minutes 27 in the following video, and I'll provide the same link in the description area. And I commented that I really need to put together a video that specifically deals with this question, and that's what we're doing right here. So I've taken a clip from that video that I've linked to there as a visual example. I will take a look at that first and then we'll come back to some other images looking at CCD bleeding or blooming. Now remember that back at the beginning of the video, Scott was talking about polarity lines. Let's take another look at that now. Right here is the planet Earth. You could see this, this polarity line going up and down through the planet through the planet Earth. Right down here, you're going to see the planet Mercury. These vertical lines are not polarity lines as claimed by Scott and Steve Olson, Wayne Steiger from WSO. I've covered these lines in previous videos and we're going to take a look at some other examples of these vertical lines from the All Sky cameras. This is the All Sky camera from Cades Observatory in Tasmania, Australia. And as I advance it on, you can see this vertical line appearing, which goes from the top of the screen right down to the bottom of the image. It is not confined purely to the sky. In fact, we can even see it within the camera housing, which obviously, if it was within the sky, it would not be within the camera housing. And you can see that as I advance the image across, the vertical line follows the sun across the sky. It also disappears from view, whenever the sun is blocked by cloud. Now, I've covered this vertical line in other videos and explained exactly what it is. This is known as CCD bleeding or CCD blooming, and it is caused by the image sensor CCD overloading and the charge in the pixels spilling out up and down the column, producing this vertical line. Now, depending on the orientation of the image sensor in the camera, this line will either be vertical, as we see here and in the stereo head images, or it will be perfectly horizontal. It will never be at an angle like this. It will always be vertical or horizontal, just as we see in the stereo head images. Now, you'll notice also that we've got Nibiru in the trees here at the moment. Let me just advance that on so that you can see that that is, in fact, a lens flare within the housing. So we've just looked at the examples in the All Sky cameras. Now, if you go to Google and Google CCD blooming or CCD bleeding, you'll find plenty of examples here. We've clicked on the images. 
and you can see those vertical lines. Of course, if you click on all, you will find plenty of very good information explaining how it all works. So it's probably easiest if you just Google CCD blooming or CCD bleeding, and uh, you'll find some very good information which explains what's going on. But certainly looking at the images here, uh, we can see the same thing. The, the lines are always vertical or horizontal, depending on the orientation of the image sensor. So they're not polarity lines, as claimed by the likes of Steve Olson or Scott Sioni or others. It is all to do with the charge on the image sensor, spilling over and up and down the, the columns or across the rows of the neighbouring pixels on the image sensor. As always, do check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area. Thank you for watching.